privilege of uh, becoming a slightly better pilot. Um, just going to go through uh, a couple of uh, basic choices of different warbirds. Um, got a uh, 1400 uh, P51B, that's an FMS model. We've got a uh, Dynam Tempest, which is 1200mm. Uh, and we've got a Dynam Tiger Moth. Uh, the first thing on any model is getting the centre of gravity right. So you should always uh, check your centre of gravity in the manual. Um, get your aeroplane nice and balanced. Uh, sometimes it won't work just putting the battery all the way up front. You may have to add weight, that sort of thing. Not all ready to fly warbirds or bind and fly warbirds or plug and play warbirds. Um, uh, uh, set up properly from uh, from the box. Some are fine, some are not. Um, a lot of people get caught out where they go and buy a, uh, say a ready to fly model um, and just presume they have to plug the battery in, um, put it to where the manual says and off they go. You do have to have a little bit of knowledge of where your centre of gravity is going to be. So on the Tiger Moth, our centre of gravity is on the very rearward strut going up to the uh, false tank. Um, this hasn't got a battery in it at the moment, but that will balance nicely if you put your fingers under them points. Now once you've got your centre of gravity right and the aircraft's balanced, as long as all of your control surfaces are all neutral, the model should fly pretty level. I may, maybe a couple of tiny clips of trim just to sort of counterbalance uh, your wind and, and that sort of thing. Now, with this model, being a biplane, we've got two wings, so we've got basically two forms of lift. So therefore we're going to achieve lift quicker and we're going to achieve rotation quicker on a take um, As the model uh, taxis out into the wind and, uh, and you uh, put the throttle up to take off, this model will take off a hell of a lot quicker than a lower wing warbird, being that we've got twice as much lift and there's a lot more lift incline as well to obviously create a nice slow flying warbird with this one. So on taking this model off, we'll be uh, pointing her into the wind and on my personal note, I wouldn't use very much elevator apart from maybe just a tiny bit of elevator just to get it moving off of the mark and to, uh, to get it pointing in a straight line and then I would release the elevator on this model and basically all you would need to do is gently increase your throttle from say 10% up to 30% and just keep the model tracking nicely and then maybe once the model's tracking nicely and you still haven't got any lift go up to about half throttle and you just want to be watching the model keeping it keeping the model, model level the tower will be up in the air um, very shortly after the takeoff roll um, and then you will be steering the model on the rudder which is a lot easier than if you keep the elevator jammed down and you're steering the model on the tail wheel. So we're rolling along the runway, we've pretty much got up to rotation speed, the model's level, we're neutral trims and all we're going to do is just literally add a tiny tiny little bit of elevator, a little bit of down stick, only a tiny amount and you should find the aircraft will naturally find the lift at rotation speed and take off. Now the important thing to remember with this is we're not just going to put the, the aeroplane on the ground, hold up elevator and just jam the throttle open because what that will cause is a torque roll where the aircraft will basically, the thrust will overcome the airspeed, the model will lift off the ground and torque roll will take effect where the model will spin the opposite direction to the propeller. So basically if we hold up elevator, we throttle up, when the model leaves, leaves the ground, the model will dip a wing. And generally, you're too low to do anything about it and uh, you'll end up clipping the wing, can't we? Wheeling the model down a runway and basically you've uh, damaged it before you've even got a flight out of it. So, just on a basic, that's what I would do to get a, a slow flying biplane with lots of lift off of the ground gracefully in a calm manner so it doesn't cause you any panicky problems. Moving on to the uh, 1400 P51. What we're going to find with this, it's a much bigger, much more solid, much heavier model now. It's a low wing model, so we're not going to have as much lift as a biplane. So therefore, with this model, we're going to need to achieve rotation speed to make the wing work. So the laminar flow works and the aircraft will create lift and take off. I don't generally use flaps for taking off. You can use 
portion of flaps to take off to create more lift but the object of flap takeoffs is basically to get the aircraft off the ground a little bit quicker. Now if you haven't achieved enough airspeed and the aircraft leaves the ground a lot of people are inclined to pump the throttle on when it leaves the ground again we're going to get a violent torque roll. Another thing that will contribute with a torque roll is we have a big four bladed uh, paddle prop which creates a lot of low down torque so when we, when we uh, jam the throttle open on this as it leaves the ground it will violently turn into the ground. Not a situation you really want to be in on any flight especially a maiden. Again, going back to centre of gravity, all the time the centre of gravity is correct, the aircraft will be balanced and you should get no down pitch or no violent up pitch of the aircraft leaving the ground. So with this aircraft, we'd sit it on the ground, I would add a fair bit more up elevator to keep the tail on the ground with this, being that you've got a lot more torque, it will want to stand the tail up pretty quickly. But at a lower speed, if you're standing the tail up quickly, you will end up in a situation where the prop will bite the ground and uh, like snap your prop blades uh, or put your motor out of alignment. But, uh, ah. Whatever way, it's not good for the prop strike. So we'd hold uh, a little bit of up elevator just to get the aircraft moving on the grass. So it's always better the shorter grass that you've got the better. Some people are not blessed with having short grass. You just have to hold a little bit more up elevator. I would not recommend holding full up elevator for the whole of the rotation run. Now, once we've moved off with the model and the model's rolling, we now want to put the wing into a flying position and the tail into a flying position. So I would release the elevator and let the model stand up, obviously being cautious and still covering the down elevator in case you need to um, obviously correct the, the pitch of the model so the prop doesn't bite the ground. Once the model's rolling again, it will now be, the tail plane's now flying and it will be steering on the rudder. And all we want to concentrate on doing is putting the model as straight along the runway as possible, um, because obviously this will aid in, uh, in not getting any form of torque crawl off of the line. Now, once you've, re re once you've reached rotation speed on a model like this, which will probably need probably half to, half to two thirds throttle, to get it up to speed. You don't want to be getting it up to speed quick. Do everything gently, do everything slowly, get her moving, and then that way any mistakes that are made will be will be a lot more spongy and you know they'll be a lot easier to recover. There will be no erratic movements. Okay, so once we've got the model up to airspeed and the model's sitting level on the mains, we should have a pretty neutral elevator. I say all you want to be concentrating on doing is just keeping the model straight and once you achieve a certain speed, you'll achieve the rotation speed and the, uh, the, the most efficient lift speed for the wing. Again, we want to get the wing flying before we get it off the ground. Once the model's up to speed, all we need to do again, the same with the Tiger Moth, is just add a tad of up elevator just to, uh, just to entice the aircraft off the ground. And it should go up pretty level, pretty smoothly, obviously concentrating on your ailerons um, just in case of any torque problem. The biggest key with a warbird is gentle throttle control and progressive throttle control. Again, any form of violent throttle control is going to create torque. Once the model has left the ground, it will create torque that will put your wingtip wing into the ground. If the model is still rolling along the ground and you add a heavy amount of throttle, you will find the model will want to veer one way. You will go to correct it with the rudder and uh, obviously then you end up in a fishtail situation and generally doesn't end okay, so moving on to the uh, Dynam Tempers, we've got the same idea and very very similar characteristics to the slightly large, larger Warbird, both sharing the same uh, lower wing, low tail plane, obviously we've got a big prop with a lot of thrust, power to weight on this model is a lot higher than the bigger 1400 model. The 1400 model will always need to achieve a lot more airspeed to get off of the ground to get your power to weight right. Now, with these smaller warbirds, I mean, we're just using the Dynam uh, Tempest, for example, it's much, much lighter. It doesn't weigh hardly anything at all. Same basics, center of gravity needs to be in the right position to make, to give the model a nice, a nice happy, uh, this aircraft on taking off is going to want to leave the ground quicker because we've got a lot more power to weight, there's a lot more thrust 
for the size of the aircraft but we're going to take it off on the same basics as the bigger model. We will only get the power that we will put in on the stick. So you can achieve a nice scale takeoff even with a lighter model. It will want to achieve lift quicker again because it is lighter. Now same idea with this uh, with this warbird. If we go along the runway with the tail sat on the ground holding a full pitch up elevator to get the model uh, going along in the grass the aircraft will achieve lift quicker because of the angle of attack at the angle of attack of the wing we're producing a lot more lift if we go along the runway with the elevator pitched up full we're creating a lot more lift it's going to get off the ground a lot quicker and then we haven't got a true flying wing we need a little bit more airspeed so we're now going to rely on thrust which generally leads people to uh, to bang open the throttle and I'll our big, uh, our big paddle prop will create a hell of a lot of torque, again, tipping the wing, tipping the ground soon after it leaves the ground. <sighs> Generally, if you hold full up elevator until rotation, the aircraft will climb straight up. So straight away, you're creating, uh, you're creating drag anyway. Um, what we want to be doing is getting the aircraft moving on grass at a full up elevator. Once the aircraft is moving, we want to be again releasing the elevator, standing the aircraft up on the mains, which will put the wing in a nice level flying position. Therefore, the wing will create lift naturally once it gets up to its uh, rotation speed. <laughs> Again, we're just controlling very gentle inputs on the throttle. So we'll start off holding full elevator. We may need to give it just a, a bit of a blip just to uh, just to get the uh, the model moving, and then we're going to come back on the throttle and gently progress the throttle. Release a little bit of the elevator once the model's uh, moving nice and straight. The model should stand up on the mains. Being aware, obviously, of your elevator just to control any pitch on the ground, so you're not going to plant the prop into the ground. have a prop strike and snap a prop on takeoff because it's not going to be pretty again and basically we've uh, we've now got to buy replacement parts for the model before we can fly it again so once we're up on the mains again we're just keeping just keeping a nice progressive throttle picking up airspeed the wing will naturally create lift again if the aircraft doesn't lift off by itself we're just going to add a tiny tiny little gentle, gentle bit of elevator just to entice the aircraft off the ground once the aircraft's um, off the ground, what we don't want to do is then hammer the throttle and, uh, and try and put a load of power down to create a climb, because the same idea again, all you're going to do is just create a torque roll and put your wing tip into the ground. Once she leaves the ground, I generally find it's a much better idea to sort of climb off on a sort of 20 to 30 degree angle, you know, get your retracts up, get the aircraft uh, nice and balanced, and then put it into the first turn. If you leave the ground, put the aircraft vertical, hammer on the power, again, we're gonna end up in a torque effect. So, uh, same sort of idea as, as the bigger warbirds, same idea that the lift, the, uh, the wing is flying, it, it will create its own lift. It's just all about progressive throttle and just keeping the model straight along the runway. So, I've covered pretty much everything that, uh, that we need to cover rotation wise and, uh, and getting the aircraft moving, standing it up on its main undercarriage. Um, we'll see you in part two for, uh, 